Hello everyone, Rurikon here coming at you with another video, and this particular video is going to be a little bit different than most of them, uh, and uh, we are going to be playing some scrolls. Now you guys might be familiar with scrolls, or you might not be familiar with scrolls, but let's be honest, scrolls is probably a lot more known than my little channel, so I'm going to assume that you guys are kind of familiar with the concept of what scrolls is. But scrolls is basically a game uh, coming to us from Mojang, the creators of Minecraft, and it is a card game very much like Magic the Gathering, except it brings another strategy element to the table. And you guys might be wondering, whoa, and why the hell are you playing a game like this? And there's something that a lot of you guys might not know about me, but I used to really like Magic the Gathering. I was really into it. I loved building decks. My favorite um, color in Magic the Gathering was red. I would always make like destruction decks and just kill everything straight up. Um, but the reason I stopped playing uh, Magic the Gathering is because for starters it's a pretty expensive hobby because you have to constantly buy new cards, you have to constantly make new decks and whatever. I mean, if you really want to enjoy it, that is. I mean, you could obviously just make one deck and stick to it, but where's the fun in that? Let's be honest. I mean, you obviously want to make more decks and have more fun with the game. And um, that's kind of uh, what Scrolls reminds me of. It reminds me a lot of Magic the Gathering. Except, like I said, they have another strategic element to it. And the difference is that, while in Magic the Gathering, a lot of the times, most things would boil down to people buying cards and having the most powerful cards and all that stuff, because that's just the way it goes. Uh, and just the, the ridiculous number of cards and expansions and all that stuff with different rule sets and the rules kept constantly changing. It kind of, um, it, it got old after a while due to the fact that you would have to constantly readjust to what the hell was going on. And by readjusting, I mean spend more money. Now, so far it seems that uh, in scrolls there's actually no unfair advantage to people who just decide to flat out spend a whole bunch of money in the game. Um, but we will be getting more into that once I show off the store and whatnot. Because for starters, I really just want to show you guys uh, a little bit of gameplay. So for that, we're going to go into the arena, and I'm just going to do a quick match against CPU. Now, when you play against players, you're going to be on a time limit. When you play against CPU, you're actually going to... you basically don't have a time limit. So it looks like the CPU is going to play first. He sacrificed the card for resources, and he lowered this thing. So now let me try and explain you guys a little bit what's happening here. So every time that it is your turn to play, you draw a card from your deck. I will show you guys the deck building and all that stuff later on. Uh, and once you get a card from your deck, uh, basically your turn begins. And as you can see, I have all these cards here. But obviously each of these cards requires a resource. Now the resource that I am using is order. Order is this symbol that you guys see up here. And right now I have zero order. Because uh, in order to get order, you need to sacrifice things. Now, you can only sacrifice things once per turn. I can sacrifice any of these uh, cards. And um, regardless of which one I sacrifice, if I sacrifice for resources, that will give me one order. Or I can sacrifice them and draw two extra cards from my deck. You can only sacrifice once per turn. Okay, so sacrificing is definitely something extremely important. Um, you should always, at least in, in my opinion, you should always, every turn, unless you have some really good cards on you, you should always sacrifice, be it for resources or to draw more cards. Because it is, it is one of those things, you can only do it once per turn, and it is very important that you do it. Because you can either speed your game up by drawing more cards, or you can evolve your game, uh, which is kind of like... Think of it as a StarCraft upgrade. Drawing cards is like trying to pull out more Space Marines, where he is uh, pulling out the uh, resource thing is kind of like your engineering bay, and you're actually trying to upgrade your Marines. Think of it kind of like that, because that's basically what happens. I mean, this is going to give you more resources to play your cards. This is going to speed up your game and just give you more cards to play. Now, I have a lot of cards here, but obviously, as you guys can see, this one card is the most expensive of all. I'm actually going to sacrifice it. Now, this might not be the best strategy. I'm not claiming that I am the best player at this game ever, but something that I have noticed 
is that even though my deck only has 50 cards, once you play out all the cards in your deck, the deck keeps cycling. So it just you just start drawing from the same deck again and again. So it's like it's not going to be the last time that I see this card. And I also have three of these cards in my deck. And if I ever actually play like three honorable generals, it means that the game has definitely dragged on a little bit too much. So I'm going to sacrifice it. And that is going to give me one uh, resource, as you can see here, one order. And there's really nothing else I can do, so I'm going to have to go ahead and pass to my opponent. Now, my opponent uh, dropped this thing, and there's two types of things that you can put on the table. Structures and creatures. So this is a creature. Creatures can move, structures will remain stationary. Now, each of these cards will have, like, several things on it. So the very first thing on the left with the sword icon is obviously how much damage it's going to make and this one's not going to make any damage so think of this as in magic the gathering you would have certain creatures that would be walls this is like a wall basically it just stays there and kind of blocks me from hitting these idols which by the way i haven't mentioned yet but destroying three of these idols is your winning condition for pretty much every match that i've done destroying three of these idols is always the winning condition be it against a computer or against a multiplayer opponent. You have to destroy three of these idols. Each of these idols has 10 health. Anyways, zero attack. This thing here is um, the number of turns it takes to activate. Now this wall is always going to be active and it doesn't do any attack so it doesn't really have the, the number of turns stat. And this is the number of health it has. So it has four hit points. So in order for me to have a creature attack this idol I will have to first do four damage points here. And in order to destroy this idol, I will have to do 10 damage points there. Now, this, uh, actually I call this a creature, but it's a structure, whatever. You'll, you'll see me making this thing a, a whole bunch of times, but I know that th it's a structure. This, however, is a creature, which means it can actually move around one tile by default. Um, and uh, what this guy does is he's going to heal all the structures by one uh, when the cooldown reach, reaches zero. And he can also move a structure in one random direction ins instead of healing. Now I realize that this concept is kind of a little bit advanced for people that are kind of new to the game. So, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that the computer had to pick kind of complicated uh, units, but whatever. Anyways, now I have a whole bunch of more units here, but as you can see, I still don't have anything that only costs one resource, so I'm going to have to sacrifice something else. I'm actually going to sacrifice this spell. I'm not going to tell you about this spell yet, if it comes to the point where you need to know about that spell, I will tell you about it. But anyways, now I'm going to pass turn. And now he's doing a Hellfire Mortar. Okay, I hate this card right here. I hate it. Because what this card does is it does 5 damage, but it just attacks a random tile. So it's like it can hit here, or here, or here, anywhere in your board. And it is so annoying when they actually land a hit on a really important unit that you've placed on the field, you guys have no idea how annoying that can get. So I'm actually going to place uh, a unit and I'm going to start attacking. But before we start that, oh yeah, this, this is also a structure by the way, so it's not actually a creature. He can't really move this unless he uses this dude to move it once his cooldown reaches zero, whatever. Um, and he's got six health points. And he also does, th that five damage is just killer. Th this, this thing, ugh. I tremble at the mere thought of fighting against it. Anyways, we have two of these uh, Ducal Skirmishers, so I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice one, even though I hate sacrificing these guys, because this is actually one of the best creatures I have. And I will explain to you guys uh, why later. But we're going to put down a Royal Skirmisher over here, and he's just going to start hacking away at this whenever he's got a chance. Now, as you can see, he comes with this two thing. Now what happens is, once the turn switches to the opponent, this thing is going to reduce to 1. And then when it switches back to me, it's going to reduce again and this creature is going to be able to attack. So each time someone plays, this thing goes down by 1. And yeah, I've actually sacrificed something already, so let's pass. Oh no, he's putting down a catapult of goose. Uh, this, this particular structure will constantly attack these four squares here, which is incredibly annoying. Uh, let's look at things. I am not liking our odds here. I'm going to sacrifice the Sinmark Zealot, and I'm going to put on... 
Uh, doesn't really look like he's going to attack me anytime soon, so... <clears throat> oh, boy. Okay, now then. Let's pass on again, and as you can see, I have two creatures. This one, since it's got one... Oh, wow. Really, dude? And here comes the shot. And he landed there, which luckily I had no units there. Now, a lot of you guys might be thinking, Oh, that's pretty useless then. No, trust me, it is not. It is actually pretty damn good. Now, I need to make a lot of damage on this unit really fast. Uh, so I'm actually going to sacrifice this infantryman here. I'm going to draw two more cards, see if I can get something. Sweet, thank you! Now, this right here should be very familiar to... Um, to Magic the Gathering players, because this is something people used to do all the time. Target unit gains plus three attack until the end of turn. And as you can see, this unit has three attack. This guy has six uh, hit points. So what's going to happen here is actually quite... Oh, damn it. I, sh I should really switch these two, because this guy has more hit points. But th that's going to be fine. What's going to happen here is basically this guy is going to now have six attack, and he's going to beat the crap out of that mortar. Get that thing out of here, good sir. Thank you very much. Now he's sacrificing stuff for resources. And another Gravelord Outcast. I need to start paying attention because he's got now two creatures that can actually engage me at any point in time. Uh, Roasted Bean Potion. I actually don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice it and hope I get something decent. Okay, we got a pushback, which is not exactly what we were looking for, but still, it's it's all right. And now let's play down another this dude right here. And this guy has spiky too, which means anytime someone attacks me, they're going to take two damage from this unit. Also, something else is that. Um, as you guys might be noticing, this particular structure is going to keep on firing over here, which is not really that useful for him. I don't even know why he placed it there. He should have placed it, like, somewhere where it would be able to hit my other characters. But yeah, we're looking good so far. So let's... This character now attack. As you can see, whenever a character is ready to attack, they will uh, start blinking, which was the case there. He's actually going to go straight for my idol. And we got another Ducal Infantryman. Uh, I am not liking this because I keep getting cards that I really don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sacrifice for resources. And we're actually going to have a shot at killing this wall here next. Because as you can see, you got three attack. You got one hit point there. And let's see. What can we do? I'm going to lower a Royal Vanguard here. And yeah, that's going to be it. This guy's going to attack, going to destroy this. And since he has the ability Relentless, for those of you who've played Magic the Gathering, I know I've said this a whole bunch of times, Relentless is basically like Trample. So he's going to go through here, do one damage to this wall, then he's going to run off to the idol there, and he's going to do uh, two more damage. Smack, smack. Okay. And he seems to be moving this guy. Oh, no. Oh. This is painful right here. You see this creature? This creature is extremely, extremely painful. Okay, how am I going to handle this? Uh, let me think here for a bit. So I can attack this guy, do th three damage, which doesn't really help me at all. If only I could put this guy over here, that would be great. Wait a second, I can actually push him back when it's time for him to fire, so I don't have to worry about that just yet. And we can kill off this machine dude. Okay, okay. And on top of that, we could sacrifice something and get a ho an honorable general on the field. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to sacrifice this guy. Now I have six resources. Put this general here. Put this guy here, this guy here. And they're both going to attack this line, which is basically going to destroy this one. Smack, smack. Good night. And they're moving this unit. Blast strike? What the hell does this do? Every time he takes damage, what? What happens? 
Every time enchanted creatures deals damage to the unit, it also deals one damage to every unit adjacent to that unit. You scumbag. That is not nice at all. Anyways, as you can see now from the opponent's thing, this guy right here is getting ready to attack. My character is also going to attack, but this is going to, it is going to attack on his turn. Now what I want to do is... Let's draw two more. Okay, okay, I like this. I like what's going on here. I just got a blessing of haste. And that is just really, really good. So for starters... thinking though should I just block one hit from that because I can block one hit and I can also push it back I can also push it back and get this character to engage it and do three damage if I only had one more damage which I do oh this is good this is good so check this out so this thing is going to make one damage and it's gonna make me draw a scroll right so this guy wait this guy's going to take one damage, boom, he's got three hit points left. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push back this thing, which means it gets sent back to his hand. And now this guy's going to attack directly there and just flat out kill that unit. And I'm also going to move this character over here, move this character over here. He's going to engage on that, that goblin, that goblin's going to die. And he's also going to do one damage to that idol. That's going to be pretty cool. I think this was a pretty good smack 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 oh what the oh I forget this guy has armor oh so bad so this creature actually has one armor so he's got damage reduction for one which basically means I got screwed I got screwed pretty hardcore there uh, however I can flat out kill this creature now Actually, no, I can't because he's got armor one. I keep forgetting about the armor one thing. Well, give me two more cards and I'll see what my options are. Okay, we got frost wind, which means we can actually delay it. We got blessing of haste, which means I can flat out destroy this dude this time around. Uh, 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 uh. I'm going to flat out destroy this guy because I hate him, I hate his guts, I despise everything he represents. And the problem is these guys right here. But what we're going to do is we're going to just flat out delay them. This spell, what it does is it adds one countdown, which means it's going to take them an extra turn to activate to all the units in that AoE area that I just did. And on top of that, we're going to lay down a Royal Skirmisher. He's going to be going here. Okay, let's see what happens here. Smack, good night, smack, smack. Oh, how did I do two damage? How did this guy do two? Sometimes I just don't understand. Sometimes things happens, happen in this game that I still can't explain. Oh wait, it was because when this dude is, is when his cooldown becomes zero, certain units just get plus two, which means this guy was actually getting a uh, plus two attack, and that is why the thing died. So that was actually, that went better than expected. Let's put it like that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to summon a general here. And I'm going to sacrifice this card for two more cards. Oh, thank you, focus. Yes, I like focus. Focus is good. He's going to sacrifice for skulls, and he's going to go for that automaton. I hate that automaton. That thing is so annoying. Oh, why'd you have to protect it with that, you scumbag? Why you gotta be a scumbag like that? Anyways, looks like all these people are pretty much active and good to go, which means I can flat out destroy this guy, but my character is going to die as well in the process. Give me two more cards. What else can we do? Oh, Blessing of Haste, which is actually not going to do anything for me right now. But the structure would be useful. So what we can do is I'm moving this character here, placing a structure here. Now this structure is a wall. Basically, it's going to absorb five points of damage for me, which is pretty good. So that will keep my Skirmisher alive there. 
and I also want to move this general over here because what happens is when this general's cooldown reaches zero, everyone around him gets to attack. So I'm not sure if... I'm still not entirely familiar with how many turns each of these units is going to get. I think that supposedly this will make them come out of cooldown one, um, one turn earlier. I think. I'm not 100% sure. But anyways, what's going to happen now is since I have all these people attacking, I also want to go ahead... Wait a second. So if I do... This guy's got... He's going to do 6 damage, which is going to take out that. And he can also do 1 damage over there if I want to. Uh, it's not really that useful. So we're going to save the Kabonk for now. And we're just going to go with Focus in here. He's going to take out this Mortar straight up. I can still lower another wall, which means I should probably just protect one of my other spaces there. Protect that. And let's just get at it. This guy's going to attack there. Three, six, and another three. And another three. So actually, they all synced up, which makes this whole alignment thing that I was doing pretty useless. And they're actually going to take out my general anyway, so it's going to be pointless. Uh, okay, let's see what we can do now. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Ooh, double blessing of haste. That means I can actually get these two guys attacking over there. If I so desire. Or I can straight up kill this one guy. Which would also be really cool. Now, let's move this guy over here, Decimate over here. Decimate just damages everything in a line, and it also does two damage to the um, to the structure there. And what we're going to do is, since this only has three hit points left, we're going to go ahead and flat out destroy that thing. I actually think I overdid it a little bit. Mm, no, maybe not. Smack, smack, good night. There goes one of his idols. Now two more idols have to go. So give me another card, thank you very much. That is pretty useless at this point in time. This allows me to resummon a unit, which would actually be almost cool for this guy because he's almost dying, but honestly, I don't really care that much about him right now. Uh, we can kill this dude by simply moving this guy over here and kabonking this dude, doing one damage. And now this character is going to attack and do one damage, take him out. Uh, this character is just going to stay right here and going to get started working on that idol over there. Wait, I got another kabonk? Huh. Should I use it? No, he's going to die anyways. I'll save this kabonk for something else. Gameplay going. Good night. Smack. So now on the next turn, this character is going to come out of cooldown and he's going to be able to attack. And we are probably going to flat out destroy. Oh no! <laughs> you son of a bitch. Oh, you scumbag. You had to go and do it, didn't you? Oh, god damn it. Basically, he used a direct damage spell on my one unit that I didn't want it to heal and the unit died, so. Okay, so what can we do at this point? Well, I'm going to go right ahead and sacrifice these dudes because the cost is way too high anyways. Oh, pushback and a crossbowman. Now, crossbowman, I'm a huge fan of. Because even though they have a big, they have a big uh, countdown, which you can call it almost a cooldown if you want, when they shoot, it's like four damage and they only cost one order to put into play. So that's pretty effective. And now let's move this dude over there maybe. I'm thinking... And we also got pushback, so we could push something back, but I really don't need to push anything back at this point. I'm actually going to summon up a big boy right here, another Night Scholar, and move this dude over here. He's going to engage on that. Okay, that's going to go down, hopefully in the next turn. Oh no, no! Why would you do that to me? Okay, okay, so this guy's going to engage here. He's going to flat out kill him. I can either do one damage to him or one damage to the idol. I'm going to go ahead and select one damage to the idol. This guy's going to engage on the idol as well. 
Well, we can actually resummon this guy, but it's it's not really worth it. I'm gonna go ahead and get a spiky plus two in here. And we still haven't sacrificed on this particular turn. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give me two more cards. Infantryman. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. I'm gonna put this infantryman right here. Thus increasing the life of my Knight Scholar. And we're looking for the goes. Smack. Smack. This unit is going to flat out just want to destroy this guy for whatever reason. Why are you so... Oh, no. Oh, that was good. That was very, very good play there. That is going to get me to actually move out of your way, good sir. As you can see, this uh, catapult of goo over here from him, in about two turns, it's going to smack these three hexes, and we obviously don't want that getting hit. Now, let's see, we can also do a pushback on it when it's about, when it's about to fire, so that'd be pretty cool. This guy is also about getting ready to go. I have nothing that I can actually destroy with my Kabonk. I'm going to... Damn, I need all these units though, that's the thing. Okay, screw the pushback, which is bad. I really shouldn't have done that. I realize it. You don't have to spell it out for me. But I really, really want to get more units on the table so that I become a, a much bigger threat. This guy is going to attack there. Oh no, they killed my crossbowman scumbags. Well, these dudes are getting ready to attack. The problem is I don't like the fact that they're attacking over there because that'd be pretty useless. This guy's going to... Oh, he can actually flat out destroy this thing. Or he could do three damage there. No, flat out just destroy idols. Always destroy idols is my opinion. Uh, we can either do... Well, let's draw some two more cards. We have another Spearman here, which is another frontline man. Put this here. Put another crossbowman here. This guy's going to flat out engage there, so that looks good. I'm going to put both these guys engaging on this one idol because that idol is going to go down, and if I can just take away this idol, I flat out win. So let's go for it. And we also have the Kabonk still. I almost feel like I should just use it and get another card. I think it's too soon. Much for that idol, which means now we can start getting people off of this line. Ooh, that copper automaton, looking dangerously, dangerously ready to beat the face. And I forgot that that thing was going to fire as well, which is terrible of me. Now you can go away and give me two more cards. Sweet, double kabonk. So you're going to engage on something, are you? Well, here, engage on this. Bonk, bonk, and we also get focus. Well, which basically will allow us to flat out destroy this and win the game. G, G. Okay, so hopefully you guys kind of got the gist of it. I mean, I realize that it's kind of hard to just get how the game functions in just one turn. I tried explaining as best as I could, but I am really interested in, in your feedback if this is something that you guys would like to see more of or not. But anyways, let's look at uh, how you actually build decks. Because that's obviously going to be a very important part of your experience. So this is all the cards you own from every single um, faction. So I also have cards here from... Uh, what's this thing called? Um, it's called Energy. Yeah, this is called Energy. I have a couple of Energy cards, even though I started with an Order deck which a lot of people say that is a mistake, and I can really understand why they would say something like that, because uh, of the way that things work. So far, it seems to me that uh, the Order deck is actually one of the more complex decks to work with. And I will say why in a little bit when I compare all of them. But for now, I just want to show you guys how you can kind of build your deck, because it's actually, I feel it's a really cool way. So these are all the cards I own right now, and you guys might be thinking, whoa, you've been playing a lot of the game. Not really. Not really. They, they, they flat out give you a full deck when you start out. 
which is like, what is it, 50 cards or something? I don't think I've bought 30 cards yet, so it, it's probably more than 50 cards. I'm not 100% sure though. I, I can't really remember because I deleted the pre-constructed deck that they made and I just kept the cards. But anyways, the way you build a card is you click in here and you're like, oh, I like this card. I want this card in my deck. So boom, boom, boom. Okay, my deck now has three cards. It's like, okay, now let's get uh, this, these cards of spells. Now let's get some creatures in here. I'm gonna go ahead and take some Night Scholars. Oops. I'm gonna take this catapult thing, and then I'm gonna take some enchantments, which is actually stuff that you put on creatures. And basically, this is how you kind of build your deck. Your deck needs to have 50 scrolls, and you can't have more than three of each scroll. If you try putting more, like for instance, I don't actually think I keep more. Well, actually, I have four royal uh, spearmen, so I can show you. So, as you can see, one, two, three. You try to go for number four, and he's like, no, fuck you. That's it. You get three strikes and you're out, so you only get three of each card. You can also, it's like, oh, but that gets pretty messed up. Like, I can't really see the stuff I've selected. You can order it either by alphabetical order or by their cost. So it's actually pretty useful and it's actually pretty easy to make a deck. Like, when I saw this interface at first, I was like, man, this, this is going to be impossible to make a deck like this. But after you play a few games with your own deck, you're going to be so familiar with the cards just by the pictures of it that you already know, like, oh, I know this guy. This guy is like one of those uh, dudes that buffs everyone else in the lane, which if you click here, as you can see, everyone in the same... I call them lanes, but they call them rows, whatever. Everyone in the same row as this guy gains plus one attack. And then it's like, uh, this is the one thing that um, increases the countdown for all the other guys. And, and I'm just saying this by the image, like, this is the wall, the obelisk, I know that this is the wall. So, trust me, you will memorize most of your cards really, really fast. Like, this is the sacrificial guy, which you can sacrifice to give two, two points of damage to a creature. Trust me, it, it becomes really intuitive. Like, I don't know, after three, four matches, you will know most of your deck. So, don't, don't be, like, overwhelmed as I was initially when I looked at this interface of how to build a deck. Trust me, it's, it's pretty simple. Then again, I could just be overwhelmed because I don't usually play card games on a computer. The only reason I'm playing this is because my friend Tom uh, advised me and he told me, man, you should really get this game. I think you should really like it. And then I watched Total Biscuits, WTF is of it, and I kind of, I kind of thought it was cool. So that's why I ended up playing it. Anyways, so far I am loving it. And this is how you build decks. You've already seen one match. Let's have a look at the store. So this is the store. And there's a lot of things you can buy. Now, Avatars is just like, uh, as far as I can tell, it doesn't give you any in-game benefit. It's just like it upgrades your looks with Avatar parts, which to me means absolutely nothing. Like, you can go to your profile and make an Avatar. You can edit it, you can change, whatever. But it's like, I got in mind to the way I wanted it to look. I think it looks pretty decent, and I don't care. I really don't. It's like you can have, you can switch your heads around, you can switch your arms around, you can switch your torso around, and you can switch your legs around. And it also lets you keep a male and a female set, as far as I can tell, because if you switch here, is this a female? This might be another, I, I don't know. I, I'm sorry, dude, I can't tell right now. I mean, you kind of look like a female because you kind of look like you got some boobs going on here, but I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's a female uh, character. But anyways, I always just use the same, so it's like whatever. That stuff that you can buy, your avatar packs, whatever. It's, it's really, if you're into that kind of thing, go for it. Now, Pre-constructed decks. Uh, also, these are the two types of currencies there are. The, the gold currency is the stuff that you get for just playing. So there's no way, as far as I can tell, to flat out buy gold. So in order to get this particular resource, you just have to play the game. And the purple one is the shards. This is stuff that you can buy for actual money. And you, it, there's actually, yeah, buy shards. So let's see, 600 shards is 4 euros. So let's say 500 shards is 5 euros, so that is like, I don't know, 1 euro per 100 shards. Let's put it like that. Rough estimate. 1 euro per 100 shards. So getting yourself a deck 
is like five euros. So as you can see, it's not terribly expensive. However, in in-game currency, it's actually a little bit more expensive. Now, these, however, are not special decks of any kind. These are the pre-constructed decks, which means these are the decks that you receive when you start out the game. As you can see, this one says sold out because when I started the game, I chose order. So they gave me the order pre-constructed deck. Then there's also an energy pre-constructed deck and a growth pre-constructed de deck. I might actually flat out just put 10 more euros into this game to get these two other decks because I want to play with other decks as well, not just order. But for starters, I'm just fooling around with order. The only thing I've bought so far is the game itself, which will net you back for 15 euros, which I assume they're gonna go ahead and convert it one to one to dollars, which is kind of ridiculous, but whatever, 15 dollars, 15 euros, which I don't think is really that expensive if you consider all this stuff that you're getting, because this game so far, I've really, really enjoyed it. But anyways, uh, these um, these are the pre-constructed de decks, as I said. These are nothing special, it's just the basis for you to start out playing with these colors, as opposed to buying cards one by one. Uh, this right here is uh, six cards, which, according to my understanding, they, yeah, they, they, they cycle on a weekly basis. So basically, every week they will put six cards here that you can flat out just buy a card. Like, for instance, I could flat out buy Focus. Or I could flat out buy Law Memorial, you know? And these are just, these cards are for all the colors. So like for instance, this one is for Order, this one's for Energy, this one is for um, Growth. And then there's also the same thing, Order, Energy, Growth. It actually, no wait, Order, Energy, Energy. For a second there I was going to say it seems like it's one of each, but no. Uh, order, Energy, Energy. and then. That's the thing, if you really like these cards, you can go ahead and flat out buy them for gold. And for gold, which is the in-game currency. So this is your one shot of buying cards a la carte. Let's put it like that. And you can also buy these for shards. So every now and then you might buy a random card for actual money. But it doesn't seem to me like it's ridiculously unfair because everyone else can buy that same card for in-game currency. And it's noting that the most expensive card here is 1,000 and you have one week to gather that 1,000 currency, trust me, you'll be able to buy any card you want if you just play a couple of matches. So you'll be able, anything that someone buys with real money, you'll be able to buy it without like extensive grinding, except for these decks. For whatever reason, I feel that these decks are a little bit too expensive. I think that this is the one thing they're banking on actually getting people to spend money on. Because it doesn't seem to me like it's worth it for me to spend 6,000 currency on one of these decks. I would rather flat out just give 5 euros and get another deck, if you know what I mean. So this is the one thing I feel is really expensive. So apart from buying these, uh, I keep calling them cards, they're actually called scrolls, whatever. Apart from buying these scrolls a la carte, you can also buy this. And how does this work? So this is a scroll pack. And what happens with the scroll pack is 10 scrolls picked randomly from all factions, which means you will get scrolls from growth, energy, and order. And you got to keep that in mind because uh, it's important. Let's say if you got your order uh, deck, you know, you don't necessarily want to have energy cards in there unless you're a more advanced player. You already know what the hell you're doing, at which point you're probably not even listening to what I'm saying right now. But if you're new to the game, trust me, you probably don't want to have your order deck with energy scrolls or growth scrolls to begin with. So here's the deal. You can either risk stuff by random scrolls and you can get uh, either a rare, an uncommon or a common. Obviously these things will be on a percentage basis, which I'm not really sure what the percentages are, but these can be of any faction. So my advice to you is if you're starting out, just buy scrolls from your respective faction. Okay. It's like if you're playing energy, buy energy scrolls. If you're playing growth, buy growth scrolls. And if you're playing order, buy order scrolls. Now the scroll pack, I would think that it's at, when you're at that point when you're actually playing multiple decks, the scroll pack might actually be a better choice for you because you will, you will definitely get some rares and you will definitely get um, uncommons, un uncommons. So it's like this scroll pack, I would say at, if you're at the point where you already own all of the pre-constructed decks, you should just get scroll packs. 
because there's a lot better chances and it's a lot better value for your money. If you're at the point where, like me, you're still just playing one deck, just get the order scrolls. And this is all the stuff that, excuse me, this is all the stuff that you can actually buy at the store. And as you can see, these scroll packs, you can't even buy these with money. So this would be the one thing that I would believe would give you an unfair advantage if you could buy stuff for money, because like people could, could just like imagine, just straight up put 50 euros in the game and just buy a shit ton of order scrolls and get a, a crap ton of rares. So, or they could be unlucky and not get a single rare. I mean, that's the thing. But if you guys are curious to see how stuff works, I'm going to buy an order scroll so that you guys can see here. And I got the Crown of Strength enchantment, which, uh, according to a forum that I was watching the other day, is actually a piece of crap card. <laughs> you can also sell cards. Uh, but my advice to you if you're selling cards is never sell cards that you have uh, three or less. Because three is the cap of how much cards of the same kind you can have in your scroll, in your deck. So don't sell stuff unless you have more than three. Trust me, as you play the game more, you will understand why. Just don't sell stuff that you don't have more than three. And also, here's the thing. As you can see, I actually have four Royal Spearmans here. The reason I haven't sold the fourth one yet is because I'm not sure if I should be trading this with someone or not because this is actually an uncommon creature. I'm not sure of its value, but as you can see, it says uncommon. So if it's like, if it's a common creature and I have four of it, I will usually sell the fourth. But if it's an uncommon creature, I'll hang on to it until I have a better understanding of the game. But anyways, this is uh, scrolls. This is how scrolls work. I've only played against the CPU, but uh, we're already running on 42 minutes. So I don't want to drag this on too much. Uh, I hope you guys understood. If you guys have any questions about it, anything in specific that you didn't understand, um, say it in the comments and I'll try to answer because as you guys know I always read my comments and I always try to answer them as much as possible but above all just tell me in the comments if this is something you would like to see more of in the channel because I'm addicted to this game right now and I would have no problems making just a ton of videos for it anyways thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one